Lima Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Arnie Franson, the managing partner and co-founder of the Pallinghurst Group. Arnie, you know, the mining industry used to be the darling of the investor community, and then it lost that status. How do you think the mining industry can become the darling of the investor community once again? That's a good question. I, I, I think what maybe what you have seen is that uh, the mining industry was a, a beautiful young child and then it became a teenager and, uh, and now it's becoming into a well-balanced adult, I hope. And uh, what, what we are seeing is, is that we need we need to to sit back and and listen to what what everyone is saying, and uh, we we need to be uh, cognizant of of what it takes to have a license to operate. And uh, in in my mind, it is it is all about that we cannot uh, participate in in anything that leaves the world a worse place than than we inherited that. We have to think about that there are ways that one can do things better. There are for sure ways that you can do things with a smaller carbon footprint, use less water, and doing the right things to the resources you have been given. And I think that as soon as you, you can demonstrate to the investment community that you are doing those things, that you are not a kind of pariah, but you, you are actually a sophisticated operator that provides raw materials that, that are essential for electrification and, and a greener future. And has uh, the Pellinghurst Group, has it got a heart now of sustainability? Yeah, I think, I think, Matthew, I think we have actually always done that. Uh, we just haven't put kind of uh, flashy names to it. Uh, if you think back, uh, what did we say when, when Brian and I started off with, with Citabello Platinum? We said that we cannot have that people go to work and some of them get harmed and some of them don't come home. That is simply not okay. And that's like 14 years ago. So when we put together Citabello, it was clearly under a zero tolerance for LTIs and, and fatalities, needless to say. And it, is, it has all been about trying to be efficient in the way that we use energy. I mean, the Kel process that, we, that, that I know that you are very familiar with is a very good example of that. We invested and have invested since 2012, so eight, eight nine years ago. We have been investing into technology that can use a fraction of the electricity that, that otherwise is being used in beneficiation and, uh, and smelting of, uh, of PGMs. So, so yes, we have it at heart. Uh, we have always been sustainable. Uh, we have always focused on that. Um, what we have done uh, that maybe is, is, is progressive is that I would say four years ago, uh, we clearly saw the trend and identified the trend about electrification, batteries, EVs, renewable energy. And we looked very much into the space and saw that there were very few quote unquote experts in that space and, uh, and people didn't really focus on it. It was viewed as a niche area. Things like lithium, graphite, et cetera, was not really viewed as mainstream. So I took my team back to the school bench and uh, took off their suits and put on a polo shirt and uh, then they had to start learning again. We also hired a number of PhDs and and very clever people uh, as metallurgists and mining engineers, but, but also geologists, et cetera, that, that allowed us to, to, to be in a position where we could really look at these deposits and, and look at how, how to mine them. And that Novo Monde, which translated means new world graphite, you seem to be entering a new world with Novo Monde and zero emission mining mobility seems to be on the horizon. You're right. I mean, what? I mean, I'm chairman of the company, and one of the one of the things that uh, that I, I I set out to to try and achieve was a zero carbon footprint miner. 
I mean, it sounds kind of uh, counterintuitive that it's possible. But if you look at the locations, if you look at what we have done in, 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 in Quebec and Canada, then it's, we, have, we have made a setup that is 100% uh, dependent on hydro-generated electricity. So it's green. It is, has no carbon footprint and it's abundant and it, it comes uh, without us polluting the world. And it's not only in our beneficiation plants that we have designed, so that can, that can be part of it. So when we do a purified coated graphite, which goes right into the anodes of, of batteries, uh, but it's actually in the mine itself. We, we will be the first open pit mine, 100% electrical. We, we, we set out to do that and we have been working with, with all the major producers of, of heavy goods and, and they, are, they are in with us. They want to do it. So I think that even if a relatively small company, you can make a difference by clearly articulating that going forward, it's not okay to leave carbon footprint and it's not okay to harm. We have also in our... Uh, our waste management, etc. We we are we are basically aiming again at not, of course, not polluting, but also not using water, to become kind of like net zero water user as well. It sounds absurd, but you actually it is possible. Becoming Canada's first all electric open pit. You have invited bids, and I see there's a January 30 deadline. But you're right, Martin. That's that's what we have done, and um, all the usual suspects, the guys in with, with with yellow machinery, and the guys with orange machinery, and and now even green machineries uh, are all in there, and we have been dealing with them. We have been to the R&D facilities in 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 North America and in Asia. We have been part of their their process, and again. It, it, it shows that even as a small company, if you set out on the path and you're consistent in your message, you, you will engage the major players. Um, and, and, and we are doing that. We are already getting bits in and, and we will be able in, in Q1 next year to announce who, who is going to provide the fleet. We, we also have bought uh, a lot of land around uh, our mine. So our... Uh, carbon catchment areas where there are forests and, and where we are planting new trees will actually allow us to offset even down to, to our employees driving to work. If they're not having an electrical bike or an electrical car, then we will offset the, the carbon footprint they have in, in getting to work. And will you also be ultra sustainable when it comes to processing in Canada? Very much so. I mean, we have, we have uh, we announced a, a cooperation with Olin, which is one of the big uh, chemical producers in, in, in North America. They have a facility right on the Lawrence in, in the middle of a, a, a very suited industrial area. And instead of transporting chemicals around, we are actually going to transport our graphite to a facility where we are right next to the chemical plant. So there's no transport of chemicals. There's a much lower uh, footprint in, in what we are doing. And obviously from a safety and, and, a, and a point of uh, containing the use of, of, uh, of chemicals, uh, this is also by far superior to, to any alternatives. And, and all the electricity we are going to use in the, uh, in the thermal uh, purification uh, is hydro generated as well. Oh, you're very lucky to have that hydro-generated electricity. We decided where we want to operate and we decided on where we want to put our plant. And, and the green electricity is very important. That's why if you look in the Northern Cape, how we are trying to harvest the sun and we are trying to, to get into renewable there, I'm following that with great interest and I think that could be very powerful for South Africa. And as, 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 you all, as we all know, if we really use the hydro to its full potential in Southern Africa, we could be sitting in Southern Africa on exactly the same as they have in Canada. We just need to invest in it and we need to, to go across borders and do things where we actually appreciate the green energy that can be generated 
And we, and we, instead of saying, well, that's more expensive than burning coal. Well, guess what? Burning coal might not be legitimate in, in some years to come. And, and it might very well be that the Teslas of the world will say, let's say they're now going to do fuel cells or they're going to do other things. They say, well, guess what? Platinum needs to be as green as possible. It's not okay to, to burn tons and tons of coal in order to, to extract it. If we swing to South Africa and um, we get to Sedi Bello platinum mines and also yeah. the whole situation of cow potential at Pielensburg platinum mine, will there be a decision before year end or early next year on whether cow is going to be used? We have been dating for many years. So I think that everyone would say if you don't get married, they would be very surprised. <laughs> Kel is a partnership between LifeZone and, and Keep the Dell that you have obviously uh, talked to and been on your programs as well. Uh, and the IDC that has been extremely supportive of this. So it's wonderful to see the South African government through the IDC committing to a greener future. And, uh, and, and Kel is really that. I mean, just, just, just think of it. We will be using maybe 18% of electricity compared to, to the conventional smelting and, and refining. So, so already they're saving 82%. If you, if you put that into how many tons of coal we're not going to burn, this is very important. And, and, you know, everything we do in life cannot have zero carbon footprint, but we can minimize it. And if there is an alternative, and Kel is a viable alternative that has been proven, I think it's upon us to do so. You asked first, Martin, the question, how can the mining industry be the darling? Well, if an investor sits down and look and they can see, well, these platinum boys, they could change their tune. They could, they could go and use another technology and save the environment for an enormous amount of, of, of carbon footprint. And they don't do it. How, how can you expect the investor to love you? Because it's wrong. Exactly. So I can take it then as read that you are, you have taken a decision or you will take a decision. And I don't know when on Cal, but can you give me more of an idea of when you will say, yes, we're going to build a Cal plant at Pilatesburg yes. Platinum Mine? I, I expect that decision to be done this year. Absolutely. Well, that'll be fantastic for South Africa. And also uh, the then would you consider using the sun energy or other renewable energy to actually supply what Cal needs. It is a lower energy need, but uh, ultimately could that also be renewable? Absolutely. I mean, you, if you look at, at our, our board composition, uh, Lyle Bethlehem from, from the representative of the IDC and work for HCI, is, is one of the prominent individuals in that space. And uh, she is very active uh, in the Northern Cape in this respect. And, and we definitely have a dialogue on that, uh, on that, in that area. And, and I think that there's absolutely no reason why not. I mean, in, in, in Scandinavia and Canada, it rains a lot and there's a lot of water. So we use water. <laughs> In South Africa, in some part of South Africa, especially, there's a lot of sun. Let's use that. We also have the hydro potential. We have a number of the wind that we have to come out. It's not, a, it's not that we can do only one thing. We need to harvest it all and be smart about it. And so uh, could there be some sort of uh, solar plant in the Northern Cape that feeds your cheapy manganese mine in the Northern Cape and also supplies you out in the northwest at uh, Sedi Bello and Pilanisburg? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, is, it is a clear vision. And uh, I, 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 I am boringly consistent. What I say as the chairman in Canada, I also say as a chairman in South Africa for Sedi Bello. We have to find a solution. It's not the same cards we've been dealt. It's like playing bridge. You play the hand that you've been given, okay? We cannot have a one kind of, one form fits all kind of thing. It doesn't work, but it's upon us to use what we have been given. We count the points we have on our hand and we play accordingly. And that's what we should do in South Africa too. And that's why on Kel, I'm delighted that the government is in and they're supportive. 
I'm delighted to see how they're being supportive with solar. And I think that we need a static solution around hydro. I really think that there's a great potential there. And some of us who have spent a fair bit of our life in the Cape, we do know that the wind is blowing down there, okay? So let's, let's harvest that too. And then there come wave energy. Wave energy, some very good waves around South Africa too. But it's, it's harvesting all of the things that you can. And what, what, what people have to understand is that investors are looking for sustainability. Investors are looking for you to do the right thing or do it as good as you can. And swinging back to Sedi Bello and getting onto the investor side again, it has always been envisaged that at some stage Sedi Bello might consider going on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Have you taken any decision on, on that yet? We're discussing it all the time, obviously. Um, and, and, and again, I, I think it's important that one becomes clear about what is the objective. Yes, I grew up in the banking environment too. So for me, everything should be listed and everything should have <laughs> a quote and, and, and that is the ultimate. However, we have a very successful operation that, that Eric Clark, our, our CEO, is running extremely well. And uh, he is not frivolous with the use of money. And he's generating good cash in the current environment. He has very good plans for our expansion into the, to the, what we call Triple Crown, which is, which is further down dip from, from our current operations. We are sitting on, on 60 million ounces contiguous there on the Western limb. And, and that is very valuable. So yes, uh, I, I can see this being being publicly listed, but again, we have to look at what does it achieve to be publicly listed. And um, if we think that the benefits uh, are there, I think we will do it. Uh, it has it has always been the clear premise that we will relist, and and I think that one thing listing does is it brings discipline. Uh, in reporting and, and communication with the market. What, what we have seen at Citabello is that we are, since we delisted in, in 2012, we are still a reporting issuer. So we are still reporting quarterlies and, and all of that. So we have the discipline and, and Eric has put in systems that um, are solid and, and, and could stand up to scrutiny in whether it was in London, Toronto or wherever we, we were to list. So uh, yes, we are, it, is, it is always there. It is something we are actively uh, looking at. And uh, when you start seeing valuations of PGM alternatives, it, it's, it start being a, a viable option. Platinum Group Metals really fit into this whole sustainability picture. So as you say, the mines have got to be sustainable, but it is a sustainable metal and you see that the prices are, as a collective, looking quite good at the moment. No, listen, the basket is, is, is up, so that's, that's fantastic. But I think, again, it's, it's, it's back to our, our, our discussion about doing as well as you can. Platinum, first of all, is obviously used in fuel cells, and that's what we all talk about, and that's, that's the big future. However, I... I don't think it's realistic to think that over the next 50 years, there will be no diesel, no petrol cars around. But guess what? The petrol cars and diesel cars that's around should have a catalyst that contains PGM from South Africa that makes it a cleaner environment, whether it drives around in South America, Australia, Russia, Europe. And, and we have an enormous benefit by having 80% of the world's reserves sitting in South Africa and we got expertise. I tell you the team that, that we have at, at, at Citabello is are some of the finest miners and metallurgists that I have met anywhere in the world. And we have that expertise here in South Africa. If we can then demonstrate to the automakers, the renewable storage, energy storage guys, that we are also extracting that using as little carbon as possible, we will again be sitting on the front, front row in the class. 
70 countries have got hydrogen strategies and those are green hydrogen strategies. If you have an electrolyzer situation and you use the proton exchange uh, electrolyzer, you would have platinum group electrolysis you know, with Absolutely. platinum on the one side and uh, rhodium on the other. I've always said that to me, PTMs are like fairy dust. Whatever you can add it to, it will make everything better. It, it, it has this catalytical magic. And uh, the fact that we have 80% of it here in South Africa just gives us the obligation to use it strategically. PTMs, are, just remember, back even to the Second World War, PGMs was deemed strategic in the US and is still deemed strategic in, in Russia today because of all of the things it can do. And, and, and you know, it goes everything from artificial fertilizers to even adding it to medicine. 